Let's pray. Father, we bless you for the gift. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for this season. That your revelatory knowledge is open to us. And that you're giving us a listening ear and an understanding heart to understand the mysteries of your kingdom. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I saw Sifiwe. Yeah, I want to... I, I, like I said, our orientation in this conference, orientation, yeah. will be towards looking at the theme of the conference. Uh, which is uh, kingdom manifestation. But we shall also be doing Bible exposition nevertheless. Because by looking at this theme, we'll be diving into the scriptural exposition of what the kingdom means and how to manifest that kingdom. And we started very well yesterday. Now, the word kingdom manifestation Neno wa ufalme has two things in it. Ina mambo mawili. The first one is kingdom. Ya kwanza ni ufalme. The second one is manifestation. Ya pili ni At the earlier part of this discussion, na mwanzo wa we shall be looking at what kingdom is. And then the later part of the week. We shall be looking at how to manifest that kingdom. Or how the manifestation of that kingdom looks like. Or what it means for the kingdom of God to be manifested. To understand this theme. We must go back to understand the original mind of God. What was in the mind of God when he created you and me? Because we see a lot of things at the middle of scriptures. That is not the purpose of God. But it's about the restoration of man. To the purpose of God. Before everything was destroyed. At the Garden of Eden. How was the kingdom like? Or what was life for man? Then what does God see as the future? After the redemption of man. The study of scripture reveals to us that the purpose of God for the creation of man was for rulership. He said, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. The first command of God to man was that be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it and have dominion now to have dominion is to rule over so the purpose of God was that man should have rulership. And scripture tells us that the heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to man. Meaning his original purpose was that he was to create one of his kind to extend his kingdom upon the earth. But he was duniani. to rule over the earth whether it is over the plants 
kama ni over the birds of the air kuhusu ndeke wangani over every creeping thing on the face of the earth kila kitu kitambaajo juu ya dunia was to have dominion ilikuwa aitawale so the purpose of god sasa kusudi la mwenyezi mungu was to have someone after his kind ilikuwa awe na mtu mfano wake his own image na mfano wake and after his own likeness na sura yake that now he should do on earth ya kwamba akafanye hapa duniani what the father god does in heaven yale yenye mungu baba na yatenda ili mungu akaitawale nje through his creation kupitia maumbile yake which is man ambayo ni mwanadamu and that is why man was not a common creature ndipo sa mwanadamu sio mtu wa kikawaida ama the bible says in genesis 2:7 Biblia inasema ku, uh, ya, uh, katika mwanzo sura ya pili mstari wa 7. He created him out of the dust of the ground. Ya kwamba alimuumba kutoka katika udongo. And breathed into his nostrils. Na akapumua ndani ya pua lake. The breath of life. Uh, pumzi ya uzima. And man became a living soul. Na mwanadamu akawa nafsi iliyo hai. So man was both made mwanadamu aliumbwa and created. Na aka Made means fashioned after something that is already existing. Kutengenezwa ni kutengeneza mfano wa kitu ambacho kinga kipo hai. Created means made out of nothing. Lakini kuumbwa ni kutengenezwa pasipo chochote. So it was made out of the dust of the ground. Alitengenezwa kutoka katika mafumbi. But created out of the breath of God. Lakini akaumbwa na pumzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu. So that he was both physical and spiritual ili awe wa nafsi yenye inaonekana na body akuwe na mwili ambao so unaonekana on the earth ili akaweze kufanya but kazi duniani but he had a spirit inside of him lakini roho ndani mwake so that he is able to communicate with god ili akaweze kwe, 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 uh, kuasiliana. kuasiliana na Mwenyezi Mungu mm. so he was able to communicate with god akaweze kuasiliana na Mwenyezi Mungu and exert rulership upon the earth akaweze kutawala nchi now the word dominion here neno kutawala hapa talks about a territory inaonyesha kuhusu sehemu talks about a place of rulership inaonyesha mahali pa kutawala dominion talks about geography wakati tunasema kutawala inamaanisha geografia when you talk about dominion ukieleza kutawala you are talking about a domain unaongea kuhusu ufalme fulani ama mahali law they talk about jurisdiction katika sheria wanaongea kuhusu sehemu it fulani it means the geographical location sehemu ya kijografia upon which the laws apply a mahali ambapo sheria zatiisha so he was giving him a territory alikuwa anampa sehemu ya kutawala upon which is going to exert rulership ataweza kutawala or dominion ama akaweze it is important to recognize ni muhimu kutambua that all this while ya kwamba wakati huu wote there was no religion hakukuwa na dini there was no system and rituals hakukuwa na ma rituals inaitwa nini Huh? There's two. There's two. We didn't have those. Hakukuwa na mambo kama yale. We didn't even have the law. Hakukuwa na sheria hata. Because the law was delivered long after. Kwa sababu sheria ililetwa baadaye. So it means the original purpose of God. Sasa kusudi la Mwenyezi Mungu la kwanza. Was not to give us religion. Hakuwa atupe dini. It was to give us a kingdom. Alikuwa atupe ufalme. That is why when Jesus tells us, Diposa Yesu Kristo anatuambia. He does not bring just uh, members hataki wa shirika he's not raising members yeye hawezi hakuzi wa shirika he's raising kings ana yeye anainua wafalme that's why jesus is called the king of kings ndipo sasa yesu anaitwa mfalme wa wafalme he's the supreme king among kings yeye ni mfalme mkuu wa wafalme and he has given us a kingdom na ametupa sisi ufalme the primary message of jesus ujumbe msingi wa yesu kristo was kingdom ilikuwa ufalme when he stepped on the face of the earth alipoingia duniani he preached nothing hakuhubiri chochote but the kingdom of god lakini ufalme wa mwenyezi mungu the kingdom of god is near you akasema ufalme wa Mungu umekaribia na ufalme wa Mungu umekuja and when he talked to the disciples na akiongea na wanafunzi he was telling them preach the kingdom of god aliwaambia ubiri ufalme wa Mwenyezi Mungu he didn't tell them to preach anything else hakuambia waubiri chochote he 
who told them to preach the kingdom aliwaambia wahubiri ufalme because it was the kingdom that was important kwa sababu ni ufalme ambao ulikuwa the kingdom of god is here ufalme wa Mwenyezi Mungu uko hapa so the purpose of god from the beginning sasa kusudi la Mwenyezi Mungu tangia mwanzo was not just to bring us sets of rules and regulations haikuwa itupe sheria na mambo ya kufuata the purpose of god from the beginning kusudi la Mwenyezi Mungu was to have a kingdom ilikuwa na ufalme that's why the bible tells us Iposa Biblia inatuambia Revelation 5 verse 9 wa ufunuo 5 mstari wa 9 that there is a creation in heaven that is singing loud ya kwamba kuna maumbile kule mbinguni ambaye yaimba saidi they sing a new song wanaimba wimbo mpya saying thou art worthy wakiimba wakisema wewe wastahili to take the book kuchukua kitabu and to open the seals thereof na kufungua mihuri for thou was slain kwa sababu wewe ulichinjwa and has redeemed us to god na umetukomboa kwa Mwenyezi Mungu by the blood out of every kindred kwa, bi, kwa damu yako kutokana na kila uh, kizazi and tongue na lugha and people na watu and nation na taifa verse 10 mstari wa 10 It says and has made us na umetufanya sisi unto our god kwa Mwenyezi Mungu kings and priests wafalme na makuhani and we shall reign on the earth na tutatawala njini we shall reign means we shall exercise rulership kutawala inamaanisha ni kuweza kutiisha reigning is not a religious term hii sio mambo ya kidini is a re- legislative term ni mambo ya kutawala is a matter of law ni mambo ya kisheria you reign over domain kuweza kutawala so sehemu so since you have redeemed us inasema umetukomboa so that we be kings and priests ili tuwe wafalme na makuhani but the purpose is that we shall reign forever na kusudi ni ya kwamba tukatawale so it means the purpose of god for coming on the earth inamaanisha kusudi la mwenyezi mungu kuja duniani is not actually that he might redeem us sio kwa sababu atukomboe but redeeming us is a means to an end ya, lakini kutukomboa ni sehemu that he ha- has redeemed us ya kwamba ametukomboa so that we can reign ili tukaweze kutawala when god sent moses to egypt wakati mungu alimtuma musa kule he says Misri. go to pharaoh alimwambia enda kwa farao and tell him na umwambie let my people go wacha watu wangu waende so that they may go and worship me ili waende wakaniabudu mimi they may have a festival wakuwe na sherehe with me in my presence wakuwe na katika ufalme wangu that tells us hiyo inamaanisha the purpose of god ya kwamba kusudi la mungu for god sending moses to egypt kwa mungu kumtuma msa misri was not redemption sio kwa kuwakomboa was not deliverance sio kwa kuwakomboa but he redeemed them lakini aliwakomboa so that they may do something ili wakafanye jambo fulani are you understanding this je unanielewa god's purpose for you kusudi la Mungu kwako he is not your deliverance sio wewe kukombolewa he delivers you so that you may do something ana kukomboa wewe ili ukatende mambo fulani that's why when nicodemus went to jesus in john 3 ndipo sa nicodemus alipoenda kwa yesu kristo katika yohana 3 he says a pharisees na biblia inasema mfarisayo a pharisee and ruler of the jew ambaye pia ni mtawala wa wayahudi the same went to jesus by night akaenenda kwa yesu kristo usiku saying rabbi you are a teacher that has come from god akisema bwana wewe ni mwalimu ambaye umetumwa kutoka kwa Mungu. can do the things you do or the signs you do except God be with him. Kwa sababu hakuna yeyote anayeweza tenda mambo yenye unatenda kama Mungu hayupo naye. Surely I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom. Na Kristo akamwambia na kuambia kama hakuna mwenye anayesaliwa mara ya pili hawezi ona ufalme. So it means that the purpose of God is not just salvation inamaanisha ya kwamba kusudi la Mwenyezi Mungu sio tu wokofu but salvation is a means lakini wokofu ni says you cannot see the kingdom ya kwamba hauwezi ona ufalme unless you are born again 
Meaning salvation opens your eyes to see the kingdom. And Nicodemus asked how can it be? Can an old man like me go back to my mother's womb and be born? He said most assured I say to tena. you. Unless one is born of the water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom. So it means salvation opens your eyes to see. The water and the spirit gives you access to the kingdom. But that is not the end plan of God. Because God's plan is reigning. So salvation is good. And deliverance is good. But the purpose of God is not complete. Until believers start reigning. Until you become a king. Revelation 1 verse 6. What does he tell us? He says, and has made us kings and priests to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So the purpose of God is that he should make us kings. You are not called to a religious organization. You are not just called to be a member of a sect or a group. The purpose of God is that you should reign and rule that you should join him to being a king. That's why he's called the king of kings and the lord of lords. He says those who overcome revelation I shall cause them to sit with me on my father's throne. You see, so the end plan of God is that he should redeem you so that you can sit on the throne. That you might have rulership with him. So the Bible declares that he made us in our own image, in his own image and likeness. He made them male and female. The word man in this scripture, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 is, is a plural, plural word and is a genderless word that is why it says male and female created he them the word man there did not mean male because the spirit has no gender. They were both in God. That's why the Bible declares in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 4 that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Continue verse 5. He says, having predestined us to adoption predestination means you is the Destined before. Ni kuchakuliwa mbele. Pre means before. Inamanisha mbele. So God made a plan for you. Sasa mungu alitengeneza mpango wako. Before the creations of the world. Kabla ya kuumba maumbile ya ulimu. To be adapted as sons. Kukua kama mwana. By Jesus Christ to himself. Kwa kwa. 
kupitia Yesu Kristo according to the good pleasure of his will kulingana na mapenzi yake and what is the will of god na mapenzi ya Mungu the will of god is that we should reign and rule together with him mapenzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu ni tutawale pamoja na yeye so friends god has call, not called us sasa wapendwa Mungu hajatuita sisi just for the observance of some religious rituals ili tukaweze kutiisha desturi fulani za kidini god has chosen us Mungu ametuchakua sisi first john verse 4 verse 7 Chapter 4 verse 7 Yohana wa kwanza moja like is ya kwamba chinzia alivyo so shall we be on the earth ndiposa tuwe hivyo hivyo duniani he want us to be like him anataka tuwe kama yeye just like he is kama file alivyo so and how is he je yeye you namna gani the bible says god has lifted him biblia inasema mungu amemuinua yeye and give him a name na akampa jina that is above all names ambalo lipo juu ya majina yote the call of the name of jesus ya kwamba kwa jina la yesu every knee shall bow kila koti litapikwa and every tongue confess na kila ulimi ukiri that jesus is lord ya kwamba yesu ni bwana so is in a reigning place sasa yeye ako mahali pa kutawala and he wants us to be in that place na anataka sisi tuwe mahali pale so kingdom sasa ufalme can never be haiwezi kuwa without a king bila mfalme kingdom is derived from a king ufalme unatokana na mfalme a kingdom is non existent ufalme hautakuwa without the presence of a king kama mfalme hayupo the king mfalme gives authority anapeana mamlaka or legitimacy kwa utawala to a kingdom kwa ufalme is different from a republic ina ni tofauti sana na Because taifa a republic is ruled by a president kwa sababu taifa linatawaliwa na or a prime minister linatawaliwa na the legitimacy of the prime president minister ama rais the legitimacy of a president U, ule uraibu ama uh, utawala wa rais is given by the citizens inapatiwanwa na wananchi that is why Diposa, the president becomes president uh, rais anakuwa rais by what we call the universal suffrage um, by ina, that is elected by the majority of the people kwa wingi wa watu ambao wataweza mchakua and if it is not clear that he was elected by the majority of the people na kama itakuwa wazi hakuchakuliwa na watu wote he suffers what we call illegitimacy yeye atakuwa sio halali kuwa but if it is clear na, lakini kama hata itakuwa wazi that the democratic process is smooth and open ya kwamba demokrasia imekuwa wazi then the president is legitimate sasa rais atakuwa halali but a kingdom lakini ufalme the legitimacy of a kingdom ule uraibu ama uhalali wa ufalme is derived from the king yeye inatokana na mfalme is the king that gives legitimacy to a kingdom ni mfalme ambaye anapatiana ule utawala so god being the king sasa mungu kukua mfalme has given legitimacy to his kingdom amepatiana ule uhalali kwa ufalme and gives his subject rulership na anapatiana mamlaka wale ambao wanatawala so that they can rule on his behalf ili wakaweze kutawala kwa niaba yake god says mungu anasema let them wacha wao the word let means permission neno hilo wacha inamaanisha kuwapa mamlaka is permission inawapa nafasi ya mafunzo god had was saying mungu baba alikuwa anasema allow them to have dominion wacha wakatawale on our behalf kwa niaba yetu so god has chosen us mungu ametuchakua sisi as believers kama waumini to exercise authority on earth tukaweze kutenda kazi mamlaka duniani on his on his behalf kwa niaba yake so the earth he has given to us as our domain of rulership sasa dunia ambaye ametupa ni kam, ni sehemu ya sisi kutawala he says let them have dominion anasema wacha wawe watawala let them subdue wacha wao watiishe let them replenish wacha wao wakaweze kuzidisha replenishing the earth kuzidisha means to make better ku inamaanisha kuifanya bora to nourish inamaanisha kuifanya to improve kuweza kufanya bora that means you are making better your kingdom unafanya iwe sawia ama iwe mzuri you see in a republic in, unaona katika taifa 
allocation of resources kupeana raslimali by principle inakuwa katika uh, desturi is done by the citizenry inafanywa kulingana na wale wenye wanatawaliwa because when you're discussing budget wakati tunaongea kuhusu you take it before a parliament inaenda mbele ya bunge and parliament is a house of representatives na bunge ni watu ambao wana the people elected from every place watu ambao walichakuliwa kutoka mahali tofauti they come to a place wanakuja pamoja now they discuss about how to distribute resources wanaongea chinzia ya kuweza kupeana hii mali ama raslimali now by principle sometimes it's not perfect Mara but by principle lakini kwa the allocation of resources kule kupeana ile raslimali is done by the citizen inafanyika na wa raia elected representatives kupitia watu wenye walichakuliwa but in a kingdom lakini katika ufalme the allocation of resources kupeana raslimali is done by the king inafanyika na mfalme that means everything the people enjoy in a kingdom inamaanisha kila kitu chenye watu wanafurahia katika ufalme is an ufale. extension of the benevolence of a king ni ile uhiari wa mfalme that means the people are as rich inamaanisha watu ni tajiri chenzia as the king file mfalme yupo and the kingdom is as rich na ufalme utajiri file as the king that rules upon it file mfalme ambaye anatawala that's why he says multiply na ndiposa anasema sidisha he says you replenish anasema nyingi uh, weze you be zeni. fruitful endelea kuwa uh, watu wa kusalisha and in your kingdom subdue it na mkaweze kutawala and have dominion mkaitawale it is instructive to note ni vema kujua that man was never given dominion over other men ya kwamba mwanadamu hakupewa awe atawale watu wengine he was given over the fowls of the air alipatiwa atawale ndeke wa ndani fish of the sea samaki baharini and upon every moving thing on the face of the earth na kila kitu kitambaacho chini ya nje upon the plants the fish the uh, fowl mimea na ndeke na hata samaki but he was not given dominion over other men lakini hakupewa fursa ya kutawala wanadamu because we are supposed wengine. to be a community of rulers kwa sababu inabidi tukue a community of kings tukue watu wote ambao tunatawala god's purpose is for us to have rulership over the domain he has given to us ni sisi wote tukue na utawala kwa sehemu ambayo ametupa which is the kingdom of the earth ambayo ni ufalme wa that's why he says the heavens belong to god ndipo sana sema mbingu ni ya mwenyezi mungu but the earth he has given to man lakini dunia ameipatia wanadamu god has not invited you to a club mungu haja kuleta wewe kwa club he has not invited you to obeyance of rules and regulations hajaleta wewe ukaweze kutii masharti fulani na sheria called you to a religious organization ili akakuita kwa dini fulani he has called you to partner with him in governance lakini amekuleta wewe ushiriki na yeye kwa utawala when the birth of jesus was prophesied kuzaliwa kwa Yesu Kristo kulitangazwa in the book of Isaiah let's go to Isaiah hebu tuende katika kitabu cha Isaya Isaiah 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 All right. Sasa. Let's read verse chapter 9. Mlango wa 9. Chapter 9 verse 6. Mstari wa 6. Chapter 9 verse 6. He says for unto us a child is born. Inasema kwetu mwana amezaliwa. Unto us a son is given. Na mtoto Um, uh, kwetu mtoto amezaliwa na mwana amepeana will be upon his shoulders na ufalme utakuwa juu yake and his name will be called wonderful na jina lake ataitwa wa ajabu counselor uh, mshauri Ka- mighty god mungu mwenyezi everlasting father baba wa milele prince of peace mfalme wa amani verse 7 m- 
mstari wa saba. Of the increase of his government. Kwa usibishaji wa ufalme wako. And peace. Na amani. There will be no end. Haitakuwa na mwisho. Upon the throne of David. Kwa kiti cha enzi cha Yaudi. And upon his kingdom. Na ufalme wake. To order it. Akaweze kuielekeza. And to establish it. Na kuimarisha. With judgment and justice. Na uhukum na haki. From that time forward. Kutoka tangia hapo ever forever milele na milele. the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this uh, amen uh, the zeal is called what the zeal in itwaje ask of zeal zeal wa tanzania mlikuja Eh? Wa kama msukumo. Kama msuku. Wa Kenya wanasema ni msukumo. Mm. Lakini Kiswahili cha magufuli ni Eh? Jitihada. Eh, jitihada kwa Tanzania msukumo kwa wa Kenya. Mm. <laughs> eh? Muondoko. Eh? Moto. O moto kwa vijana wa Kenya. Moto. Ni wivu wa Mungu. <laughs> Now look. Sasa tazama. When God was preparing to reveal Jesus. Wakati Mungu alikuwa anataka kufunua Yesu Kristo. He says a son. Anasema mwana shall be given. Atapeanwa. That is Christ. Ambaye ni Kristo. Says a child shall be born. Anasema mtoto atazaliwa. That's Jesus. Ambaye ni Yesu. The born is the flesh. Uh, kuzaliwa says he's taking the form nyama. of man. Anachukua sehemu ya mwanadamu. The Bible says he considered no being God as robbery. Ailikuwa e, Biblia inasema ya kwamba hakuona kukuwa Mungu But he took a form of man. Lakini alichukua sehemu ya Jesus. mwanadamu ambaye ni Yesu. But a son is given to us. Lakini mwana anapeanwa kwetu. But when uh, the promise was given, lakini ahadi kipeanwa. He didn't promise us a religious leader. Lakini hakutuahidi yule kiongozi wa kidini. He promised us a king. Lakini alituahidi mfalme. He promised us a government. Akatuahidi ufalme. So come on believers. Sasa sisi wa God has wa not called us to religion. Mungu hajatuita kwa kufuatilia udini. He has called us to government. Ametuita kwa utawala. He has called us to government. Ametuita kwa utawala. You know one of the most established governments we had uh, Uh, in the ancient world was the roman government unajua sehemu moja ya utawala ambao tulikuwa hapo awali ni ya uroma and this is the time when jesus was being manifested na ni wakati wenye kristo alikuwa anadhihirika but we had uh, a governing council there called the senate like kulikuwa na sehemu ya utawala ambayo iliitwa senate the chosen ones ambao waliitwa the governor would call a certain kind of people to help him govern mtawala angeita watu fulani wakaweze kumsaidia kutawala they called it their senate wanaita senate and the word they used was ecclesia na jina ambalo walitumia ni ecclesia that's why we refer to the church as the same name as ecclesia the called out ones ndiposa tunaweza kulinganisha kanisa But they are watu ambao called out ecclesia. to have a ritual lakini hatujaitwa kwa kufuliza testi fulani simply to obey some rules and regulation ama kufuata sheria fulani you are called out to help jesus govern tumeitwa kusaidia bwana Yesu kutawala you are called out to form a government tumeitwa kutengeneza ufalme he says the government shall be upon his shoulder inasema ufalme utakuwa and of the make. increase of his government na uzidishaji wa ufalme there wake. shall be no end hakutakuwa na mwisho you see when mary came to the angel and asked wakati maria alikuja kwa malaika akauliza how shall it be itakuwaje the angel replied and said Malaika alijibu akasema Luke chapter 1 verse 35 Luka 1:35 Says the power of the Holy Spirit shall come upon you Ikasema nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu itakuja juu yako Which you produce shall be holy Na chenye utazaa kitakuwa kitakatifu He says you shall call his name Jesus Utaita jina lake Yesu For God shall give him the throne of his father David Kwa sababu Mungu atampa 
kiti cha enzi cha baba yake Dawid. So when the Dawid. child was being introduced to Mary the mother. Sasa mtoto alipokuwa anajitambulisha kwa Maria. He was being introduced as a religious leader. Hakuweza kukuambiwa ya kwamba huyu atakuwa kiongozi wa kidini. He was being told aliambiwa that the child you are about to give birth to. Ya kwamba mtoto ambaye utazaa he shall be the continuation of the throne of David. Atakuwa mfululizo wa kiti cha enzi that cha Dawid. That means the throne of David was a type of what this son is going to become. Inamaanisha kiti cha enzi cha Daudi kilikuwa ni sehemu ya So God ya brought utawala. to us a government. Mungu alituletea utawala. And that is the kingdom. Ambaye ni ufalme. He preached nothing. Hakuhubiri chochote. Except the kingdom. Ni ufalme tu. Uh, let's look at a few scriptures here. Tuangalie maandiko fulani hapa. Of wa, what was the central message? Ambao ambayo ni ujumbe na uh, wakini wa of Jesus Christ. Wa Yesu Kristo. Matthew chapter 10 verse 7. Mathayo 7 mstari wa 10. As you go file unavoenda preach this message ubiri ujumbe huu the kingdom of heaven is near ufalme wa mbinguni uko karibu matthew chapter 12 mathayo 12 verse 28 mstari wa 28 but if i drive out demons by the spirit of god kama nakemea mapepo kupitia kwa roho wa mungu then the kingdom of god has come upon you then ufalme wa mungu umekuja katikati kwenu matthew chapter 18 Mathayo 18 verse 23 wa Therefore the kingdom of heaven ufalme wa mbinguni is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants ni kama mfalme ambaye alitaka kukutia hesabu zake na wafanyikazi wake Matthew chapter 24 Mathayo 24 verse 14 mstari wa 14 He says and this gospel of the kingdom anasema na injili ya ufalme will be preached in all the world itahubiriwa ulimwenguni kote as a witness to all the nations kama shahidi ya mataifa yote and then the end will come na mwisho utakuja Luke chapter 4 Luka mstari wa 4 verse 43 mstari wa 44 But he said akasema I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God Ni lazima nihubiri injili ya ufalme to the other towns also kwa miji zingine pia Because that is why I was sent kwa sababu hiyo ndiyo kusudi nilitumwa And he kept on preaching in the synagogue of Judea Na akaendelea kuhubiri katika sinagogi ya Judea Luke chapter 8 Luka sura ya 8 verse 1 mstari wa It says after this Inasema baada ya hayo Jesus traveled about Yesu alienda kote from town and village to another kutoka miji na sehemu tofauti preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God akihubiri akileta ufalme wa Mwenyezi kuhusu ufalme wa Mwenyezi Mungu and the 12 were with him na wale 12 walikuwa na wao Luke chapter 9 verse 11 Luka 9 mstari wa 11 But the crowds learned about it and followed him. Wakati umati ulijifunza wakamfuata. He welcomed them. Akawapokea. And spoke to them. Na akanena na wao. About the kingdom of God. Kuhusu ufalme wa Mungu. And healed those who had need of healing. Na akawaponya wenye walitaka uponyaji. Jesus was preaching nothing. Yesu hakuhubiri chochote. But the kingdom of God. Lakini ufalme wa Mungu. Saying the kingdom has come. Akasema ufalme umekuja. And you are invited to the kingdom. Na umeitwa katika ufalme. He didn't have another message. Hakuwa na ujumbe tofauti. Luke chapter 12. Luka 12 and verse 31 But seek his kingdom lakini utafuteni ufalme wa Mungu These things will be added to you Na mambo hayo yote yataongezeka kwenu Luke chapter 12 Luka 12 verse 32 32 Do not be afraid little flock msifadhaike For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom Kwa sababu ni furaha ya baba yenu kuwapa ufalme the father's good pleasure ni furaha ya baba to give you the kingdom akupe wewe ufalme everything else is a means kila kitu chochote for you ni to be effective kishia. in the kingdom ndiposa wewe ukue hodari the car ufalme. is not the goal uh, gari sio mwisho the house is not the goal nyumba sio mwisho all these things are means for you to be effective Easy in the kingdom wewe ukue hodari katika ufalme so don't focus on the items you use sasa, to work sasa wewe usiangazie vyombo ambavyo tutumie when you go to an office and you're given a computer 
Ukienda katika afisi na upewe tarakishi. You don't focus on the computer. Wewe mawazo yako haikui tu tarakishi. The, the computer is a tool. Hiyo ni chombo to help you be effective. Kukusaidia ukue hodari. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever God gives to you. Chenye chochote chenye Mungu anakupa wewe. That is why they are called additions. Ndiposa uh, it, but what should ungezeka. you seek for say seek ye first the kingdom of god lakini yabidi utafute nini na all these things are additions kwanza ufalme wa mwenyezi mungu luke 16 verse 16 luka 16:16 the law and the prophets were proclaimed until john sheria zilitangazwa mpaka yohana since that time the good news of the kingdom of god is being preached tangia wakati hule habari ya ufalme ndio inatangazwa ama and everyone is forcing his way into it na kila mtu anakaza kuingia ndani is forcing himself into the kingdom anakaza mwendo kuingia katika ule ufalme Luke 18 verse 17 Luka 18 I tell you the truth nakwambia anyone will not receive the kingdom of God who will not receive the kingdom of God is like a little child uh, who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it yeyote ambaye hatapokea ufalme wa Mungu kama mtoto hawezi ingia ndani mwake Luke 22 verse 29 Luka 22 29 And I confer on you a kingdom Nami nawapa ufalme just as my father bestowed one upon me Kama vile baba yangu alinipa ufalme The father conferred to Jesus a kingdom Baba alimpa bwana Yesu Kristo ufalme That is ufalme. what he's conferring to us Na akatupa sisi ufalme ule ule Jesus said Yesu Kristo anasema John 18:36 Yohana 10 My kingdom uh, is not of this world Ufalme wangu sio wa hapa duniani so it was about the kingdom. Sasa ilikuwa habari yote and he used ufame. every opportunity to preach about the kingdom. Na alitumia fursa yoyote kuhubiri kuhusu When Nicodemus came to him in John chapter 3. Nicodemus alipokuja kwake katika Yohana 3. And he was asking no one can teach the things that uh, you, you do. Uh, the, no, uh, no one can do the things you do except God be with him. Na anasema hakuna yoyote ambaye anaweza tenda mambo yenye unatenda kama Mungu ayuko naye. Jesus still na used that opportunity to teach about the kingdom. Yesu anatumia fursa ile kuhubiri kuhusu. No one can ufame. see the kingdom unless he's born again. Anasema hakuna yoyote ambaye atauona ufalme. Says, can I go back to my mother's womb and be born? Anasema niendende katika tukio la mapema. No one can enter the kingdom. Anasema, Unless he's born of the water ufali. and the blood, the spirit. Kama hata zaliwa kwa maji so na every opportunity we have Sasa, kila is about the kingdom. Ni kuhusu ufalme. That is why Jesus was not just sentenced by a religious leaders. Mungu, uh, Yesu Christo, haku na of course he was taken before wa kidini. Be, of course he was taken before the Sanhedrin. Hata kama aliletwa mbele ya wa viongozi wa kidini. But eventually it was the Roman uh, governor, Pilate, that's, that sentenced him. You see? Lakini baadaye ilibidi aje mbele ya Pilato ambaye alikuwa mtawala wa kirumi. The most people that were, tre- uh, were threatened by his birth. Watu wengi wenye waliweza kutishwa na uzali, kuzaliwa kwake. Were the rulers. Ilikuwa ni viongozi. That is said go and inquire where that boy is being born. Na wakasema enda mkatafute amezaliwa wapi. So that I may go and worship him too. Pia mimi niende nikamwabudu. But the scripture say he wanted to kill him. Lakini Biblia inasema alitaka kumuua. So it was about the kingdom. Sasa ilikuwa yote kuhusu ufalme. And the king had been born. Na mfalme alikuwa amezaliwa. Now let me round up this. Sasa wacha nimalizie hapa. By telling you about the scripture we are going to focus on this week. Na kukueleza maandiko ambayo tutaweza kufululiza nayo. And we are going to borrow heavily from the book of uh, Matthew. Na tutaenda kuweza kuangazia sana kuhusu kitabu cha Mathayo. As we study about uh, the manifestation of the kingdom. Now, let me give you a little introduction of this book. But we shall look at this as we progress in the week. Now, Matthew 
Mathayo was written majorly to a Jewish audience. Iliandikwa kwa Wayahudi. Matthew was one of the team of the disciples there. Mathayo alikuwa katikati ya wanafunzi. This Matthew na huyu Mathayo was a Jew. Ambaye alikuwa Mjahudi. Wanted to show the Jews Alitaka kuonyesha wa Yahudi that this is the promised Messiah. Ya kwamba huyu ni Masiya ambaye aliaidiwa. Because the religious uh, setting of that time. Kwa sababu mpangilio wa kidini wakati ule. They were not sure or they did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Wao hawakutambua Yesu Kristo kama Masiya. That he wanted to show them that this is the promised Messiah. Lakini alitaka kuambia huyu ndiye mtia aliyetiwa mafuta. And Matthew borrows heavily from the citations of the Old Testament. Na Mathayo akaweza kunakili sana agano la kale. And he says this is the Messiah that was promised. Na akasema ya kwamba huyu ni Masiya ambaye aliyaidiwa. And this is the new Moses who will be the teacher. Na huyu ni Musa wa wa hapa ambaye atakuwa so he devised this book in uh, some introduction and conclusion na anaweza kukawa hiki kitabu and devised this book in major five, um, uh, five major sections na anakawa kitabu hiki kwa mambo matano ambayo so he ni starts by introducing Jesus anaanza kwa kutambulisha Yesu as the king after the throne of David kama mfalme kwa uh, and all the way to Abraham. Mpaka anaenda kwa Ibrahim. But he also introduces him na pia anamtambulisha as the teacher that Moses had promised. Kama mwalimu ambaye Musa aliahidi. Just like Moses came from Egypt, kama vile Musa alitoka Misri. So Jesus comes from Egypt. Sasa Yesu Kristo pia anatoka Misri. And he was baptized through Jordan. Na anapatizwa Yordani. And spent 40 days in the wilderness na ana, like Moses. Anakuwa siku 40 kule jangwani kama and, Musa. And stands on the mountain to give the law which is the mount uh, uh, the Sinai. Na anasimama kwa mlima kupatiana sheria. And when Je- Jesus Sinai. delivered these laws we call it the sermon on the mountain. Na Yesu Kristo analeta uh, hii sheria ambayo tunasema ni injili ya mlima. M- mlimani. Mlimani. So introduces us through the birth of Jesus Christ. Sasa anachotambulisha kuhusu kuzaliwa kwa Yesu Kristo. And introduces Jesus. Na anatambulisha Yesu as the promised Messiah. Kama Masiya ambaye aliahidiwa. I said the book is divided into five parts. Nilisema kitabu kimekawanywa katika sehemu tano. With an introduction of chapter 1 to chapter 3. Ku kwa kutambulisha sura ya kwanza mpaka tatu. And across the week we are going to look at every section. Na tutaangazia kila uh, kwa wiki lote kila sehemu. So zahemi. in the introduction he introduces the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Na katika utangulizi anaanza kuzaliwa ama historia ya kuzaliwa kwa Yesu Kristo. And the birth of Jesus Christ. Na kuzaliwa kwake Yesu. And introduces him as the Emmanuel God with us. Na anatueleza yeye ni Emmanuel Mungu pamoja nasi. And you know that as we end this book also. Na tutajua ya kwamba tukimaliza hiki kitabu. It's going to end the same way as God with us. He shall be with you till the ends of the age. Na itamalizia Mungu kukua nasi paka mwisho wa dhahari and the first part na sehemu ya kwanza he has divided this according just the way Moses divided his writings the Torah into five na ameweza kukawa kama vile Musa alikawa sheria katika vitabu tano section 1 is chapter 4 to chapter 7 sehemu ya kwanza ni uh, sura ya 4 mpaka 7 and he announces the kingdom na anaweza kutangaza ufalme. about ufame. announcing the kingdom. Anaweza kutangaza ufalme. The purpose which he has come. Kusudi ambalo amekuja. And he has come that he may restore the reign on the earth. Na amekuja ili akarejeshe utawala. He has come that he may create a new family. Akaweze kujenga jamii mpya. We we read that he after the God affirmed him after his baptism. Tunasoma wakati Mungu aliweza kumtangaza wakati amepatizwa he sent him into the wilderness akamtuma jangwani and when he came out of the wilderness alipotoka jangwani he started to teach about the kingdom of god every every section ends with some teaching 
kila sehemu inaishia kwa So this section ends with what we call the sermon on the mountain. Na hii sehemu inamalizikia teaching them about the kingdom. Akiwafunza kuhusu ufalme. Says about the meek. Says about the peacemakers. Wale ambao wanafanya amani. He says those who do not hate the persecutors. Ambaye wenye wanatezwa. He's introducing a new way of life. Ana leta hali mpya ya But his primary focus is about the kingdom. Lakini kusudi lake muhimu ni ufalme. That he's restoring the reign of man upon the earth. Anarejesha utawala wa mwanadamu duniani. 